Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you hear a lot of bad news from, from the Middle East. I thought you might want to hear some good news. What you hear in the news is mostly what man is doing and what the enemy, Satan, is doing. So I'm here to tell you what God is doing in the Middle East, and that's very encouraging. God is active. God is, has a plan for the Middle East, has a plan for Muslims, and we as Christians have to find out what he wants to do and join him. Amen? So there are many, many Padinas in the Middle East who come to Christ and they give their lives to Christ. And let me tell you about more about Padina. He was, he was a very devout Muslim and he was serving the militants in Islam before she got disillusioned and attempted suicide several times and then you saw what happened. But let me tell you the rest of the story. Padina started sharing the gospel with her mom and the many people came to Christ through her. I, I remember those days when she called every week after that. She, the following week she called on the air. She said, I, I, Jesus has changed my life, has healed my mom. And she said, uh, after my mom was healed, I started saying, oh, I, I remember I was depressed. I was killing myself. They're, they're brainwashing me. I'm not depressed anymore. And she said, I sat down and I thought of all the bad things in my life to make myself depressed. And I couldn't. I was happy. <laughs> and you know, when you come to Christ in one way, you think everybody has to come to Christ the same way. So you know what they did? From that week on, they went around, found people who were depressed and suicidal, invited them to their house, gave them dinner, and accidentally turn on television to our program. And after they watched the program, they would tell their guests, why don't you believe in Jesus? Why don't you try Jesus? And if it doesn't work, go ahead and kill yourself. They thought that's the only way to evangelize. <laughs> so every week we had people calling us, say, oh, here's my friend, here's my cousin. They come to, uh, wanted to come to Christ. In a matter of two months, they had 20, 25 people. And they started a house church. And we trained them. We brought them out, Padina and other leaders, and trained them. Because I can't go to Iran, bring them out in a third country, train them. And today, Padina, if not the largest underground church network, she has, and her husband, now she's married, her husband and mom, they have probably one of the largest underground church networks in Iran. In over 90 cities, they have churches. And I'm proud what God is doing. Amen. Let me share a little bit about the um, threat of Islam. You know, we, uh, we have media. We have a 24-7 broadcast, both through satellite and internet. But we are not a television ministry. We broadcast first to reach out to persecuted Christians in those countries. Second, to evangelize Muslims, which many of them are so open, especially in Iran. But mainly, we do church planting. We are not a television ministry. We are not a media ministry. We are a church planting ministry using media, using television to do it. When you look at what Islam is doing around the world, may bring to your heart fear, the threat of Islam. You may be looking at uh, the, the killings, what, Mos what Christians are being killed, and the terrorism around the world. I just want to warn you. The Goal of the enemy through terrorism, number one, is to bring fear and hatred to the, our hearts. And we as Christians should be alert and don't allow that hatred and fear to come our heart. Amen? The goal of 9-11 was to bring fear and hatred to America. And it's continuing. And may I suggest this. May I warn you. The spirit of Islam is a spirit of fear and hatred. And if by any chance you have any fear and hatred toward Muslims, may I suggest that you have submitted to the spirit of Islam and you need to get rid of it? That's not God. God doesn't hate. He's not afraid. We have the power. We have the gospel. We have the Holy Spirit. We can overcome. So would you pray? Let me pray. God, would you allow us, help us to get rid of any root of Hatred and fear towards Muslims. In Jesus' name, we want to be free to love you and love others. Amen. Now, Islam has a, has a goal. The goal is clear. They say it again and again, and it's written in the in Quran, that they are they're called. They're, they have a mandate to take over the world using violence, anything that's needed 
to take over the world. And those Muslims who are serious, you see, well, my, my neighbor doesn't do that. And I see moderate Muslims, and I love all Muslims, but I want to assure you, moderate Muslims are not obeying Quran 100%. Because it commands them. One third of Quran is about violence. It commands them to do jihad. It commands them to kill infidels. And if they say, oh, I'm being peaceful, then you're nominal. Just like nominal Christians who don't follow the teachings of Jesus closely, there are nominal Muslims who don't follow the example of Muhammad and the teaching of Islam. So but be, be aware. I'm not here to bash Islam. I've given my life for Muslims. I love Muslims. But we have to tell the truth. I'm so glad about it, that we are no longer want to be politically correct. I, I support that idea. Now, Iran, Islam is, uh, is the greatest threat to the peace in the world. Let, let's settle that. It's the source of persecution for all Christians, the greatest one. And it's the largest people, Irish people group in the world, 1.6 billion, which God, who God loves. And the most ignored mission field in the world. Largest number, unreached, but nobody is, or very few people are caring to reach out to them. It, number one, because it's hard. Of course it's hard. But with God, nothing is impossible. God wants to share the gospel with them. Don't you believe that? You know, God ha loves them and has a plan for them. Do you believe that? Sometimes we don't believe God. 1.6 billion. God so loved the world. Don't you think so? Don't you think God has a plan? Don't you, if you ask God, God, what are you going to do with this 1.6 billion? What, what's happening in the Middle East? Oh, God, you know, we are so confused. There's so many things going on. What is your plan? Do, do you think God is going to say, I don't know? <laughs> God has a plan and he's doing it. And he calls us to join him. Why should we share the gospel with Muslims? Number one, because love. God loves the whole world and he asks us to love because we have his heart. And the whole world includes all these Muslims. Number two, if you don't, you don't feel love, then there is another motivation. Obedience, because he said to go to all the world and share the gospel. Amen? And if, if the love and obedience doesn't motivate you, I have a third motivation for those kind of Christians. I'm sure they're not here. The third motivation is if you don't share the gospel with Muslims, they're going to kill you. How, how is that for motivation? Okay? <laughs> Now, God has a plan, and He's working. We must join Him. Now, where is God working? Here, I want to, you want to be informed. You know, there's so much happening in the world. You want to know, God, where, what are you doing? Where are you working? May I suggest that you look at the Voice of the Martyrs list of the countries? That's what I love about Voice of the Martyrs. They're working in countries where God is working and the enemy is opposing. That's what persecution is all about. God is advancing and the enemy doesn't want to lose ground, doesn't want to lose its captives, and it's fighting back. So if you have mission-minded, you know, the Voice of Mar Martyrs, we sometimes feel it's just hard. Of course it's hard. We have to love our persecuted brothers and sisters in jail. Of course we have to love them and pray for them and help them. But it's more than that. It's just not, not just need, but it's a strategy. It's where God is working. Voice of the Martyrs empowers Christians, persecuted Christians. And not just help them, but empowers them to bring their persecutors to Christ. And if you are mission-minded, if your church is mission-minded, and you're looking for, for frontiers of mission, of where we can work, where nobody else is working, or very few are working, may I suggest that you look at the list of countries that the Voice of Martyrs is working at? That's the frontiers of mission. Now, Iran is the greatest threat and, and the greatest opportunity. You're talking about where is God working and you look at Iran and you see what a great, unique, historical opportunity there is in Iran. Iran is the greatest threat because it's developing nuclear bomb. And once it has it, uh, it could use it against Israel. At least it could use it to threaten and bully the, the countries around it. It is the greatest threat, but also it's the greatest opportunity. Why? Because Iranians. Now, listen to me. Are you going to be, you're, you're going to be shocked. Iranians, by millions, have rejected Islam. Mosques are empty in Iran. 
This is typical of a mosque in Iran. And it's not an overnight thing. It's not an emotional thing. Oh, we don't like Islam has hurt us. It's a matter of 35 years of experience. It's deliberate. It's deep and wide. It's not temporary. It's going to stay. This, the rejection of Islam is so deep. The new generation in, uh, in Iran, they're saying, not only they're saying Islam is not the way, it's our problem. They're saying we need to get rid of Islam if you want to have a future. That's the movement of God. That's what, how God is preparing a nation. And most of us don't even know what God is doing, let alone join Him. Now, I want to uh, share about Iran. Iran is the only country that Christianity is invading Islam. It's the only country where Islam is on the defense. It's growing in everywhere in the world. It's growing in Europe, in America. But in Iran, it's shrinking. And it's the country where Islam is experiencing its greatest defeat in history. That's a big word. But if you look at history of Islam and the world, never, never something like this has happened. That the whole nation is done by Islam. They, they do not want it. They want to get rid of it. And that doesn't mean they're com coming to Christ. That means they're open. That means they're open to new ideas. And if we don't reach... To reach out to them, somebody else will. They're so open, and, but they don't have any discernment. Whoever gets to them first gets their heart. We got to move fast. There is an open heaven in Iran. I want to shock you with this. I believe Iran will be a Christian nation. How about you? What do you think? <laughs> well, praise God. The believers are here. That's good. But even if you're not sure, I want to assure you because the Bible says that. And I, I think that settles it, right? Bible says, Jeremiah 49, 34, talks about what's happening in Iran. The history of Iran in the th last 35 years is there. But the last verse, it says, I will set my throne in Elam, which is in the land of Iran today. And setting my throne is not just number of Christians, not just number of churches. You know, in Dallas, we have so many churches, so many Christians. The, does it mean God rules in Dallas or Texas? No, it, it's, it's good that we have that many Christians in churches, but it's more than that. It means a society where Jesus is known in every segment of society. He is loved, he is worshipped, and he's obeyed. Not just in churches, but in the government, in marketplace, everywhere. That's when God can say, I rule here. That's the future of Iran. Market, it's happening. It's already happening. It's not far distant in the future, it's happening. Number one, it's because research says so. It's not just me saying. Operation World Manual, that's a research group, in their last edition, they have put Iran as the fastest growing evangelical population in the world. Afghanistan number two and Tajikistan number 10, all three are Farsi speakers that are reached out by our broadcast and we see many people come to Christ. Not only research shows that we are moving in that direction fast, but also our numbers show that. We have the names of over 32,000. The last 16 years we have been on the air, of course, hundreds of thousands of contacts, but we have 32,000 who have called us to say they have the one Jesus, and we pray with them. Probably 10 times that many made the same decision who did not dare to call, and our phones are blocked, so the number of calls is limited. So to, to summarize, summarize, millions have rejected in Islam, and the people of Iran are saying Islam is not the, pro is not the solution, is the problem. Now what is the strategy? Let's think. Here is a country open spiritually. People are rejected Islam, but they have no freedom to hear the gospel, to go to church, to gather. The hearts are open, but the country is closed. The churches have been closed. How do we get to the people's home? Here is how we Christians can use technology. What is the best strategy to use technology to go over the heads of the mullahs with satellite television into people's homes, look at their eyes and say, God loves you. And that shakes them up because in, in Islam, Allah has 99 names, but not one is love. So talking about God's love is a shocking message written in their hearts and they come to Christ. And another big issue is that in Iran, satellite dishes are popular. Everyone has it. They would go without bread, but not without satellite dish. 
And by the way, satellite dishes are illegal in Iran. Here you can see the <laughs> law-abiding citizens of Iran. You know, everyone has it, even the government officials and the families have it. So even though the law is there, they're not reinforcing it. Sometimes I feel the satellite dishes are the national flower of Iran because you see it everywhere. <laughs> what a tool. Everyone has it. And we can, even nomads have it. They don't have running water, they don't have electricity, but they have this satellite dish. We can go even to their tents and talk to them about the Lord. I want to show you a video, just an example of the hunger that exists there. This is a caller called Rogi who had attempted suicide the week before, and now after a week, just uh, here's our message, and she calls. خداوند تو رو به این لحظه آورده تا تو رو نجات بده امشب اولا میخوام اینو بدونی قبول کردن مسیر رد کردن خدا نیست اتفاقا قبول کردن خداست همون خدای یکتایی که باورداری همونه که اومده تو رو نجات بده نه ترس روح ترس از خدا نیست خدا باباته و امشب میخواد دختر خودش رو در آغوش بگیره امشب میخواد اشکاتو پاک کنه امشب میخواد زندگی تازه بهت بده آیا خودتو در آغوش همچین پدری میخوای امشب بندازی بگی دیگه من به دین و مذهب و اینو کار ندارم خداوند و خودتو میخوام خداوند و نجاتتو میخوام و زندگی تازه به من بده میخوای امشب تولد تازه پیدا کنی؟ میخوای؟ اگر آمادهش هستی با من دعا کن آماده هستی؟ بله بله با من دعا کن این جملات رو از ته قلب بگو به خود خدا بگو من هدایتت میکنم بگو خداوند میدونم من رو دوست داری بگو با صدای بلند بگو من هم تو رو دوست دارم بیا و امشب مرا نجات بده تو رو شکر میکنم به خاطر من آمدی گناهان منو بخشیدی از امشب آمین بگو از امشب دختر تو هستم و تو پدر من آمین 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 تو رو شکر میکنم من رو پذیرفتی گذشته من رو پاک کردی و شکر میکنم برای آینده روشنی که در تو دارم عیسی مسیح مرا عوض کن به نام عیسی مسیح آمین آمین هللویا تو چون خواستی امشب دختر خ... آمین هللویا با خداوند راه برو یک کتاب مقدس برات میفرستیم بخون و مثل یه بچه بخور و بذار رشد کنی تموم شد دیروز تو تموم شد 
دیشب تو تموم شد روز تازه ای تو زندگیت شروع شده و این روز با بابات دیگه تنها نیستی دیگه بی کس نیستی خداوند پدرت باهات هست خداوند با تو بلکه در تو هست تو دیگه تنها نیستی با خداوند زندگی کن آمین آمین تو رو به خداوند میسپارم و میدونم به دستای خوب کسی میسپارم هللویا معمولیت یادت نره آنچه که امشب گرفتی مال دیگران هم هست عزیزی Praise the Lord Just an example And she shared the gospel with her family, and she has a couple house churches right now. And, and uh, you know, when you look at uh, uh, people like, like that, uh, I just start thanking. Did, did you realize, beginning she was crying out of pain, at the end she was crying out of joy. That's what Jesus does. And that's what your prayers, your support, I mean, that's what we're doing with VOM. Going into people's homes and changing people's lives. It's not just comfort. It's transformation. And people like Muslims who come from darkness to light, they, they appreciate the light. And they become, they, they can't sit down. They, they will follow. They will do. And here I want to I wanna change your notion about Christian television, at least in the Middle East. In America, I know. When I say Christian television, it's, oh, not again. And, oh, here is a televan televangelist. I'm not a televangelist. Okay, I'm a church planter. I'm a pastor. And, the, and when I talk about Christian television, it's not what you think. It's, you know, questionable teachings and practices. And maybe you have your own favorite preacher, but and you go to a good church and you, have, you watch television, Christian television, for some good preaching, maybe. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about desperate people, desperate families, fearful in their homes, locking the door, watching illegal satellite channels, Then they go, and they, first they watch the national channels. Oh, I, I, I sick and tired of that mullah preaching. Change the channel. Change the channel. And they go to another. Oh, I'm sick and tired of hearing Quran. Re just, just change it. Oh, no, go, go back, go back. They're talking about love. They were talking about forgiveness. Talking about God is not what, what we taught. L let's watch that. And they watch it as a family. They come to Christ as a family, and they become dedicated. I want to emphasize that. These are not television believers. In, in the West, we say, a television believer, we have a negative view. Oh, he's just a weak Christian. They don't do anything for God. They don't go to church. They just watch television. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who are converted, changed, and they're ready to live and die for Jesus. I remember this man called me. Well, let me share the, about the, the, the woman. The woman looks like have a, a better, you know, faith and dedication, just like her. But they're meant also. Uh, th this woman called me after the program, and uh, I had time to talk to her. But I was so impressed by her knowledge of the Bible. Uh, about 20, 25 minutes we talked, and every subject that we talked, she had a biblical worldview. Talked about marriage, talked about persecution, everything. I, I was so impressed. In my heart, I was saying, some of, some of my elders don't have that complete worldview, Christian worldview. And I was jealous myself. I said, she's reciting verses from her heart's memory. I don't know that many verses by heart. 20 minutes later, I said, hey, lady, uh, I'm so enjoying talking to you. Just tell me why you call. And she said, I called because I need a Bible. I don't have a Bible. What are you talking about? You're, you are a walking Bible. She said, how could that happen? When did you come to Christ? She said, one year ago. In one year, without a Bible, you, you sound so mature. How did that happen? And she shared something. I think that's a key to discipleship. She said, I watch your programs. When you teach, I take, I take notes. And when you use a verse, I write it down. I memorize it, and I obey it. No church, no pastor. But God is working, not weak Christians, strong Christians. Let me share another one that put, brings some of us to shame. This woman said, I have been married for 27 years. And a few months ago, my husband married a younger woman, 20 years younger. And I have three kids, taking care of kids. And in Iran, a man can marry multiple wives. And he said, she said, he came home and just said, I married another one. I'm not going to be with you. I'm, I'm going to be with him. 
with her. And every, many nights she would, he would come home and I would fight. I was angry. I was negative. I would just bash him. I would just insult him every night. And he would just go. He says, I, will, I won't be here. I will go with, with the other woman. And I watched your programs. You talked about Christ's love. I felt so rejected and broken. And you said, Jesus accepts me and heals my heart with his love. And I accepted Jesus and it brought so much healing in my heart. I started treating my husband differently. And he would come home and look at me. He expected me to just fight and, and cuss at him. And I didn't. He said, are you okay? Do you need a psychologist or something? I mean, you sound like different, crazy. Should I take you to doctor? And then she said, after a while I watched, see, this is a progress. After a while I watched that. If your husband doesn't love you, Jesus loves you even more. And the love that Jesus gives you, no man can give it to you. Even if you have a good husband, you will not be totally satisfied until Jesus comes to your heart and loves you. I said, Jesus, yes, yes, Jesus. I said, I pray. I said, Jesus, you are my husband. I don't have a husband. He doesn't love me. He rejects me. You are my husband. He said, then another day, I, I heard that you want, you want us not just to forgive our enemies, to, but to love our enemies. And I said, okay, who are my enemies? Okay, my husband and my dad woman. Okay. And now, <laughs> what should I do to love that woman? Oh, I know what to do. And she said, I called her. I said, you called her? She said, yeah. And, and, and the other woman was, was very nervous. She thought, I'm going to just uh, be bad-mouthing her and insulting her. I said, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm, not, I'm not calling to attack you. I just want to share something. Okay. She said, you know, you stole my husband from me. And I love you and I forgive you. But I want to tell you, now I have another husband who is even better. <laughs> He's even more loving. And I want to introduce him to you. And if you sp uh, spend time with him, I won't be jealous. You can spend as much time with him as you can. And he, she said, I shared the gospel. Do we find faith like that here? I, I think we do, but it's not common. To love your enemy in such a way to even share the gospel with them lovingly. That's what God is doing. Of course, visions and dreams are common in Iran. People are coming. I mean, they say... We saw Jesus. Jesus healed me all the time. I mean, you saw, the, you saw it with Pedina. But there are so many stories of how Jesus appears to them or heals them. Sometimes I feel Jesus is running a special for Muslims these days, you know. <laughs> special appearance. And sometimes I feel if you want to see Jesus these days, you got to be a Muslim. I mean, I, there is something God is doing for Muslims. A special. I think he's telling us, hey guys, look, I love them. I've done my part. I've opened their heart. I appear to them. But you do your part. Would you share my message with them? I've done my part. In Iran, when you see persecution, it's because of reaction. Here are some typical groups, churches, house churches. And they watch. And then they, we, we teach them how to have a house church. They're not just watching television. We tell them how to gather, how to study the Bible, how to love one another, how to form a house church. The government of Iran is aware of this movement, and the persecution in Iran is a reaction to church growth. Good news. Our brothers and sisters are in jail, beaten, raped all the time. The churches have been closed, the building churches, and that's why we, we have changed our channel the last two, three years to provide church services, deliver them into people's homes. We have weekly church service. Millions of Iranian Christians, they say, this is my church. I don't have any church. This is my church. Most popular program we have is on Fridays. And you can, you can come and observe. You can be our guest. Come, come and tour our facilities. It's just than, less than two, two miles from here. So here we are, and there they are. They even put their church like, like church and, and attend. And here is an underground church. Let me just show a little clip to get a sense. the worshiping with us. زیرا ما ساخته دست او هستیم خدا ما را در مسیح ایسا از نو آفریده تا آن کارهای نیکوی را که او قبلا برای ما مقدر کرده انجام بدیم به جا آمریم. آمین. I have, I have a letter here. Just want to share about the persecuted church, how 
they are amazing. You know, when we talk about persecuted church in VOM conference, the goal is not just to inform you or even inspire you. I think another goal is that help us to walk closely with Jesus. Because persecuted church may be needy, but it's not weak. They, we may be able to help them with our prayer and our resources, but they are able to help us to walk closely with Jesus, to learn from them forgiveness, perseverance, joy in the midst of suffering, sacrifice. We, they can teach us so much. They can help us fall in love with Jesus. I want to read a letter just came two days ago. A young girl, 19 years old. My name is Fatima, and I'm uh, 19 years old, and I live in Iran. I've become a Christian for a year. I was born into a very religious family, so religious that they can't, you can't even imagine. I have been told that I would burn in hell since I don't share their beliefs and, and religion. My father calls me a sinner Jew. Jew is an insult in Iran. And, and an infidel. A few days ago, he told me that one day Mahdi, Mahdi is their Messiah that will come back. Mahdi will come and destroy all Christians. I told him, yes, Mahdi comes to kill us Christians, but Christ will come before Mahdi and will take us up. Theology, you know. <laughs> Pre-trip, pre -trip, okay. Because Jesus doesn't like war. After saying this, my father got very angry, grinned his teeth, and attacked me. He started beating me really bad until my mother separated us. After my earthly father was beating me, I saw a vision. As my, as my fa uh, earthly father was beating me, I saw a vision. It was a verse from the Bible. Look at this vision. He saw, she saw a vision of, of a Bible verse, which I had not memorized. It played like a video clip before my eyes. Here, he's beating her, and she's closing her eyes, and she sees a movie of a verse in front of her. The verse said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. After being beaten, I came to my room and laid on my bed. It was amazing how much peace had come over me. I did not shed a tear. I had no bitterness. I told myself, what an honor that I was beaten for Christ. And that people called me infidel. I felt so much love for my heavenly father. Now listen to this. It was the best beating in the world. Every time I talk to my Heavenly Father, I realize that Jesus is my life and my purpose for living. Here is a one-line poem I have written, and it's beautiful Farsi poem. The meaning is, life is empty and meaningless if it is not sacrificed for you. Persecuted church, powerful church, but they need our help. They are ready to live and die for Jesus, but they need our help. Would you join God, pray for them, get involved, support them, and they're going to overcome. Middle East, there is a revival going on. We have to find where God is working, and in Iran is working in a major way. And when Iran is saved, it's like a domino effect. It's going to impact the whole Middle East. God already is at work. Would you join? May I share with you how we can work together? But number one, you know, we... Let me, let me go to, okay, let, let's pray. Number one, pray. We, we're going to pray. Number one, to support. I appreciate what VOM does. We do some projects together. And I encourage you to continue to support VOM all over the world. But if you want to join us specifically, please sign up for our newsletter so we can be in touch with you. But prayerfully consider supporting us. But number three, serve with us. We are just around the corner, and you guys live in this area. And you can come with, to be volunteers. You can come to be guests on the show. You can come and tour. Uh, actually, I have a sign-up sheet for those who want to tour the studio or interested in joining us in ministry. We are local here. God is doing 
great work. And here I have a few other tools. Number one, I have an evangelistic video here. You can give it to your friends. It's both in Arabic and Farsi and English. So it's your choice to, to get it. This is by donation. Everything else is free, but this one is by donation. And you can give it to your friend. There is a video, the green one, we did it with Voice of the Martyrs. It has several testimonies in it. That's for free. You can show it to your church. You can show it to your small groups. And um, it has Padino's video in it. Those who are pastors or you think your pastor is going to be interested in joining us to reach out to the Middle East, I have a pastor package back there. Either if you're a pastor, come and get it. And if you know your pastor might be interested, get it and give it to your, to your pastor. And I pray we together. You know, as I shared, not many people know what God is doing in Iran. And even fewer people are involved. And I'm praying, God, send help. Send people who will join because this is a historical opportunity to turn a, a, church, a, a, a nation to Christ. Iran is ready. The question is, are we ready? Father, I'm so thankful for what you're doing around the world. You love the whole world, Lord God. I pray for Christians in the West especially, Lord. Lord, we, are, we have so much. Open our eyes to be thankful for what you have given us here. And inspire us. Inform us to see what you're doing. And give us your heart that we might have love for nations, Lord God. I thank you for the voice of the martyrs. I thank you for everyone here, Lord. We all love you. We all want to do your will. We want, all want to see your kingdom advance in the whole world. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We're going to join together, and uh, Don L., if you would come up, and, and let's have anybody from Iran alive that's right here. If you want to come up, we're going to pray for you as a ministry. We're going to join together and, and uh, lift you up before the Lord. So we're going to stand, and anybody from Iran alive, come on up here. And our brother John, who is actually our frontline worker, also brother John, two brother Johns. Our brother will lead us in prayer for Iran Alive and Pastor Hormoz. Let's pray together for Iran. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we bow down our heads this morning in awe of you for what you have done in Iran and the ministry of Iran Lives ministry. Thank you, Lord, and we know that you are the God who created all the heavens and the earth and you are the one who created the people in Iran and the country of Iran. And you are the one who gave his own lives for the people of Iran. Lord, in this morning, we remember all our brothers and sisters, those who are living in Iran, that uh, even though many people have never heard the gospel and your love, you have given your life for them. Lord, uh, we pray right now that uh, your Holy Spirit may move over the country of Iran as a mighty wind to break down all the powers and principalities of the darkness and the power of Satan and the power of all the bondage, Lord. And Lord, we claim the country of Iran to be your inheritance. And Lord, uh, we pray that, uh, we pray for uh, we pray especially for Iran Lives Alive Ministry. Lord, whenever our brother uh, Homos share your gospel in the satellite, I pray that your word and your voice may be heard through his speaking. And your face may be seen in the TV and in the satellite. So that, Lord, many people can, may come and hear your love and experience your salvation, Lord. I pray we remember those who are in bound and those who are in prison and those who are being persecuted in the country of Iran. We pray that you be their comforter. And you, we pray that you, are, you may be the rock and you may be the shelter for them, Lord. May your love and your may uh, grace be experienced all over the country of Iran. And may your voice be heard and you, may your gospel be preached in every corners and in every TV and every satellite. 
We pray for hearing your, our prayer. We pray, we give thanks to you for what you have done in the country of Iran and what you have done with the ministry of Iran Alive Ministry. May you be uh, the God and may you be all dear Lord in, uh, in your houses and all, every family. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done with us in this morning also. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord.